I'm Executive Director for Upper Tennessee River Roundtable and Keep Southwest Virginia Beautiful. Tonight we're doing a rain barrel workshop and we thought it would be a good idea to show you a little bit about how you can make one at home. It's really not that hard. So we'll have different folks uh, showing you how to cut and drill the holes in a minute, but let me show you these parts that we have to put together with the rain barrel. So this is a colander or spaghetti strainer, whatever you want to call it, and this is going to go in the top of your barrel. And we do that because your downspout will actually feed into this. And then if you have leaves, I mean, we all have leaves and things that come through the gutters and come down here, and they'll be caught in this. And we don't glue this on because that way you can't take it off <laughs> if you glue it. You gotta take it off and clean it out every now and then. So we have that for the top, and then we drill a hole in the bottom so we can put in uh, a hose bib or a faucet. And of course, that's how you're gonna get the water out. And we put it as close to the bottom of the barrel as we can so you can try to maximize as much water as you can. Then you gotta have an overflow because believe me, when the rain comes down, that barrel is gonna get full really fast. And so we put in the side an overflow. So once it gets full, then it's gonna shoot out this side and you turn that away from your house, of course, because you don't wanna get water down uh, in your, uh, going down the, the side of your house. And so the rain water that you get from the roof that goes into your barrel is really good for your plants, for your garden. You could even wash your car with it, but don't drink it because you know, we don't know exactly what's in that water. It might have little grit from the shingles if you have the shingle roof. So be sure you use the water pretty fast because you don't want to get stagnant because it can get really stinky and you don't want that. One thing we definitely encourage is to, to um, put in something for mosquito control. You know, we're doing a really good thing by saving water, conserving water, and so we don't want to cause a problem by breeding mosquitoes. And these are mosquito dunks. You can get them at uh, Lowe's or Walmart or any other store like that. And you just put one in every month. So when you set up your rain barrel, put one in and then mark it on your calendar so you can do it a month from there. Now something else that you can do, which is actually uh, cheaper and works really well is oil, vegetable oil. And I mean, most of us have vegetable oil in the kitchen. So you can just pour some vegetable oil on the top of the water kind of a sheen, you know, so it keeps the mosquitoes from going down in. But remember when you empty the barrel, you're probably gonna have to add more uh, oil and just like I said, put that in once a month. Um, we do have a brochure and this is on our website. So you can go online to www.uppertnriver.org and we've got both sides of this and it tells you exactly the pieces that you need. And here you can see it's set up where you put that, um, gutter right down into your barrel and it's got uh, pictures of each step so if you want to do it yourself you can do that at home and we've got a list of supplies and all the tools that you need to do it. Um, one thing I will mention when you set up your barrel it's really good to put it on cinder blocks or bricks or something to get it up a little higher. Um, now this one is actually the first one I put at my house and I put a hose on it, a garden hose, and that really doesn't work. Uh, you just don't get enough pressure. And so the best thing to do, um, figure out, if you're gonna use like a soaker hose, that would work if you're right next to a flower bed, which mine is next to a flower bed. Or if you wanna use a bucket or whatever, put that underneath your uh, rain barrel before you cut off the gutter because you wanna make sure you've got enough room so you can get the water out because we've set it up before where we couldn't get the water out and it's pretty frustrating. So make sure you measure and before you cut. And then you've got it set up and you don't have to worry about cutting it again. It's already done. But in the winter, it's really a good idea to put this in storage, empty it out, put it in storage in your garage or outbuilding or whatever you have because it will fill up in the winter and freeze into a humongous uh, chunk of ice. and it, <laughs> It's, you can't move it, and we did that one year. Uh, so it's best just to take it down. And then you've got to buy this, uh, like a flexible downspout that you attach to run the water off in the yard, because again, you don't want it going down in your foundation. So if you have any questions, just let us know.
afternoon. My name is John Blankenship. I'm the Agriculture and Natural Resources Extension Agent for Tazewell County. And today I'm going to be operating the drilling station. Uh, there's going to be two holes that's required to drill into the barrel. Uh, one hole, it requires a one and a quarter inch uh, spade bit to drill through and that's for the drain overflow. And of course you want that near the top and on the side. Now you don't want it all the way at the top because it might, if the barrel's not exactly level, spill over the lip as opposed to going uh, out through the overflow. So down about an inch from the top on the side and you would drill the one and a quarter inch hole. And then you would come around from the, from the side of the barrel to the front of the barrel, very near the bottom because you want to make sure that all of the water leaves out of the barrel. And you drill a three quarter inch hole here in the bottom of the barrel and that will be the hole that your faucet will go in that you would be able to hook a hose bib onto or uh, be able to put a bucket under or whatever to uh, utilize the water from the rain barrel. Thank you. education specialist at the Tazewell Soil and Water Conservation District. Here we're going to be cutting a top in our rain barrel and making a hole to where we can put our sieve inside to strain out anything from getting inside of the barrel. You want to cut you out a pattern out of a piece of sturdy cardboard that will be just a little bit smaller than your sieve. Hold that down and use a sharpie and make a circle around on top of your barrel. It will look like this. Then you want to get your drill and drill a small hole into the barrel so you can start your jigsaw. Once you get your hole drilled, you want to use a jigsaw to, to cut out the entire circle. After the circle is cut out, this colander will fit nicely down inside of the rain barrel and protect it from anything falling inside that shouldn't be there. 